In this lecture, we will learn how we can read the user details of the logged in user from the request. So if I go to VS Code and in there we have this authorize guard. And if you remember, when we were extracting the token from the request, after extracting the token, what we did is we read the payload from that token. And then we attached that payload to the request by creating a user property on that. So on this request object, now we have a user property and that user property is assigned with the payload from the JWT. From here, let me go ahead and let me remove this console.log statement. And what I'll also do is in this source folder, I'll create a new folder and I'll call it as constants. And inside this constants folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'll call it as constants.ts. And inside this, I'm going to create a constant and I'm going to export it. So here I'll say export const and I'm going to call this constant as request underscore user underscore key. And to this, I'm going to assign a string value user. Now, why I'm doing this is because wherever I want to use this string user, there, instead of specifying it as a string value, I can use this constant. And this I'm doing because, let's say by mistake, instead of user, the user has specified users. In that case, it is going to return us undefined because on the request, we don't have any users property we have a user property. So since we are specifying a string value, it is possible that we might misspell it. And since it is a string value, it will not complain about it. And just to avoid that issue, I have created this constant. Now I want to use this constant instead of this string value. So here I'm going to specify request underscore user underscore key. And in order to use it, we also need to import it from constant.ts file. Okay, so everything is going to work in the same way. The only thing is instead of specifying a string value, now I have created a constant and I'm using that constant. Let's save the changes here. So remember that on the request, we are adding a user property and to that we have assigned this payload. Now we want to read this payload from the request. Now, why we would want to do that? Let me show you that. So let me close this constant.ts file. Let me also close this authcontroller.ts file. Let's close this authorize guard and let's also close this allow anonymous decorator. And let me go to this tweets folder and in there we have this tweet service.ts file. Now here, when we are creating a tweet, at that time, we are also finding the user who is making that tweet. And based on the user ID, we are finding that user. And this user ID, we are getting it from the create tweet DTO. But now instead of doing it like that, since this create tweet endpoint, you see this create tweet endpoint, since it is a protected route, because we have added the authorized guard on global level. So all the endpoints in this application will be protected. Only those endpoints which is decorated with allow anonymous decorator that will be public. All other endpoints will be private endpoints. So that means in order to access this endpoint, the user will have to provide a JWT with the request. And when the user is providing the JWT, that JWT will be verified. And during the verification process from the JWT, the payload will be extracted and it will be attached to the request using the user property. So for this create tweet, when a request will come to this create tweet endpoint, in that request, there will be a property called user. And that user will already have the user ID in the sub property of the payload and it will also have the user email, right? So here, instead of specifying this user ID property in this create tweet DTO, if I go to this create tweet DTO, there we are specifying this user ID property. So that means we are expecting the user ID property in the request body. 
but instead of getting the user id in the request body we can simply read it from the request object because that will be attached to the request when the jwt will be verified so i'm going to show you how we can read that user detail so again let's go to this tweet controller.ts and in order to read the user details from the request here i'm going to create another parameter i'll call it as user and i'll decorate it with at request decorator and to use this request decorator we need to import it from nestjs slash common okay let's save the changes and for now let me go ahead and let me comment this line and what i'm going to do is let's say console.log and on this request okay instead of calling it user i'll call it as request because this request decorator it will read the request object from the request which we will receive for this endpoint and it is going to return us that request object and on that request object we have a property called user we have added this property called user if i save the changes here let's go to postman and first let me try to log in the user i'm logging in this mark what let's grab this jwt from here so this jwt is issued for this user mark what now let me close all other requests i'll simply say don't save let's close this request also and let's close this request also and for now let me also close this sign up request okay and now let's open this create tweet post request okay so here we want to create a new tweet let's call it as example tweet 4 and let's go to pg admin and from there we have a user with user id 11 let's say this user with user id 26 is going to create that request but we don't need to do that because anyway we are not going to save anything in the database because here if you see i have commented that line of code which will create that tweet in the database so here we don't need to change this request body i just want to show you how the request will look like and since it is a protected route we also need to add authorization header with the request and it should be a bearer token here let me go ahead and let me specify that jwt that token and now if i go ahead and if i make a request in the response we have received 201 created but actually nothing has happened in the database but if i go to the terminal you will see that when we are logging request.user it has logged the payload so let's go back to the terminal again so it has logged that payload in the payload we can see the id of the user the logged in user so the current logged in user is mark what this jwt it has been assigned for this user mark what and for that user if you see the id is 26 so that you will see assigned to this sub property and you can also see the email of that user so here in this way we can get the details of the logged in user basically the id of the logged in user and the email of the logged in user from this object we also have other properties that is issued at expired at audience and issuer we are not interested in these properties but since in this method you know from within this create tweet method we are calling the create tweet method of tweet service if i go to tweet service there you will see that in the tweet service we want to find a user using the user id and this user id will be the user id of the logged in user because once a user is logged in then only he should be able to create a tweet right so we can read the user id of the logged in user from the request itself that user id we have in this sub property of the payload right so instead of providing the user id in the request body we can simply read it from the request object because this create tweet endpoint it is a protected endpoint and in order to access this endpoint the user will have to provide the jwt that jwt will be verified by this authorized guard 
and when it is verifying that JWT, if that JWT is verified properly, it is also going to add the payload using which we created that JWT to this request object. So to this request object, we are attaching a property called user and to that we are assigning that payload. I hope till here everything is clear. Now here in the tweet controller, how we are reading the request by using this request decorator. But accessing the request object every time it is not advisable to use and this will also make testing of the endpoint difficult so what we will do is in the next lecture we will create a decorator which will be responsible for reading the payload from the request object and wherever we want to use the payload which contains the user details like the user id and the email we will use that decorator let's do that in our next lecture if you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.